Good, still morning, good morning, dear saints. Church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, referred to as the King James Version. The one and only true, perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, written in English. Yes, it is. See, this is why we discount the <laughs> Greek and the Hebrew. Why? Number one, what Greek are you talking about? As we have discussed before, uh, the Nesalon Greek thing, which is not the basis for the uh, authorized version anyway, is up to 28. And the Texas Receptus, which is the Greek, uh, which is uh, the Greek for the authorized version, has 19 uh, different variations of that as well. Okay, same with the Hebrew, okay? The Hebrew, the Greek, which one? Okay, the Hebrew and Greek were stepping stones to get to the seventh and final purification of God's word, English. See, you want God's word in another tongue, another language, you use the authorized version as the stepping stone to translate into other tongues. You don't need the Hebrew and the Greek. And the Jesuit trained scholars will come on to you and say, you're saying that people need to learn English in order to know what God says. Every time you run into that, brethren, hey, atheists, every time you run into that, you know what you do? Throw it right back at them. It's like, hey, you're telling me that I got to learn Koine Greek and scriptural Hebrew in order to know what God says. Go off someplace. Okay, go on someplace. <laughs> Crazy. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me. Keep an eye on me. Sometimes I skip a groove. More often than not, the mouth goes quicker than the brain and vice versa. Okay? All right? Keep an eye on them. All right? Keep an eye on them like that. Because I make mistakes sometimes. I'm not a perfect black Poolian Englishman who never makes mistakes or who is without hypocrisy. No. No, I, I make mistakes and sometimes, guess what? I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> okay? Why? John 3.16 is not the gospel. You know, you, you send me an email, you know, and you say to me, you need to preach the gospel. Now, granted, I, you know, I don't, uh, the, the spam thing gets full like crazy, <laughs> but um, when you, you come to me, it's like, you need to preach the gospel. Oh, okay, you'll get my attention. It's like, okay. <laughs> What's the gospel? Oh, how readest thou, okay? You tell me, okay? You tell me. Well, you need to preach John 3.16. That's it. You, you, you lost me, dude. You lost me. You lost me. John 3.16. John 3.16, huh? <laughs> John 3.16 is not the gospel. Okay? There is a place in personal testimony and witness where John 3.16 is applicable. For an example, when the Lord opens up a door and you have the opportunity to be used of the Lord to guide someone onto him through the scriptures, through the book of Romans, and you see the individual that you're talking with, you see their visage, that they understand it, that they get it. It's like, Especially when you get to Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. When you're, you know, being led to guide them through that Romans road, okay? Which is why so many people want to avoid Romans 1, 2, and 3, okay? Uh, when you see someone get it, like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. What can I do? 
there's there's oh my oh my and they start to uh, that bridge between not broken and brokenness there's that little bridge between there that's when as i have done okay i speak to you from experience that's when it's like whoa 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 dude 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 chill okay don't you don't go jumping off of a building or anything crazy hold on okay god for god so loved the world that he gave okay chill here's the answer to your problem god loved past tense and god gave past tense okay then you continue on in romans chapter 3 from verse 19 to the close of uh, chapter 3 it's like okay here is the answer to your problem it's the lord jesus christ okay See, no, you, you, you fake grace or twits out there who just go to uh, Romans 3 and avoid all the necessity of brokenness. Uh, you guys have not ever led someone to the Lord. Oh, you've led them to your God, Satan. Yes, you have, but you've, you've, never, you've never been used of the Lord Jesus Christ, obviously, to guide someone on to him. You never have. You never have. You guys make false converts. You make them twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And you make uh, atheists uh, all angry because of your heresy and preaching this false gospel in another Jesus. Okay? Okay? So in that, like I'm saying, in that bridge between brokenness and uh, unbroken, you know, that bridge between there, that's, you know, as I said, it's like, whoa, whoa, dude, <laughs> dude, don't worry. <laughs> Jesus Christ is our hope. Don't, for God so loved. You don't begin your witness and testimony with John 3, 16. Okay? It doesn't come up first. It doesn't even come a second or third. Okay? All right? With very rare exceptions, have we ever personally ever gone to John 3, 16, except for what I just said. Like, the guy who gets the look on his face is like, when they get it, the light bulb comes up, you know, it's like, you know, when that, that boom, that one thing you lack, the Lord puts his finger on it, and they get it, and you see it, okay, that's why, and they think it's like, oh, oh no, everything is, no, no, dude, that's when, okay, but, Proverbs 18, just one verse to start. Verse 13. He that answereth, answereth a matter before he heareth it. Okay? It is folly and shame unto him. Now, in this video, we're not going to address the ridiculous God loves you heresy. Okay? Uh, like I said, even if... Beg your pardon. Even atheists can have enough brains in their head, even though they believe in a galaxy far, far away nonsense. But even they have enough to be like, okay, God loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell. Go away with that, okay? We're not going to address that because that has been covered before. God loves you. And also, our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley made two videos of Are There People God Hates and Are There People God Abhors? addressing this very issue okay we're going to look at doctrinally why john 3 16 is not the gospel there is a place for it in testimony if the lord so requires it remember if you go outside with a prepared statement of you check this just this this to give on to someone who's doing that Who's doing that? Is that you? Or is that the Lord? Hmm? All right? But there is a place for John 3.16 in your witness. That, that, yeah, you don't discard it. But ne <laughs> never, never, as God so loved the world. Because why? That's the opening up of what? God loves you. God loves you, huh? God loves you, right? Go to Proverbs chapter 7, okay? Hey, you atheists, you okay? You want to you wanna dismantle these Christians with the stupidity of God loves you? Pay attention, okay? John, uh, Proverbs 7, 
Verse 18. Loves. Loves appears in the text of Scripture only twice. You look on King James Bible online, the word loves appears three times. The third appearance uh, is in Psalm 45. Okay? The third appearance is in Psalm 45, not within the text itself. Psalm 45, for the sons of Korah, a machil, a song of loves. It's not in the text. It's not in the text. Remember, the text of the scripture is inspired. <laughs> not the references, okay? And the headings above are not inspired either. It's the text itself that is inspired, inerrant, perfect, given by inspiration, okay? It's the text. So King James Bible Online, when you look up loves, it'll come up with three. You know, and, I mean, look at it. Don't look at me. Look in your scripture, unless you got that Holman one with the giant print and they don't have that. It's not in the text. So, textually, loves only appears twice. All Old Testament and Proverbs 7. Oh, let's begin at verse 10 on to verse 18. This is talking about the harlot. The harlot of Proverbs 17, which I tie into as being Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, uh, that be Roman Catholicism. Okay? And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Yes, a woman is supposed to be the keeper at home. Okay? Now is she without. Now in the streets and lies and wait at every corner. <laughs> yeah, like when I was tracked in the, the Catholic parking lot a couple of days, uh, maybe a week or two ago when that... Hispanic Catholic woman came in and accosted me. <laughs> yeah. So she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face sent unto him. Impudent. Okay. This is Mystery Babylon, I believe. Okay. This is Mystery. This is talking about the harlot who's now in the streets and lieth in wait in every corner. All the church buildings, the phallus houses, you got one there, you got one there, you got one there, you got one there. Huh? Okay? I have peace offerings with me. Verse 14. This day have I paid my vow. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, carved works, carved by whose hand? Man. With fine linen of Egypt. Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness, as you know, dear saints, is a type of the world that the atheists and the Christians love so much. Okay? I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Verse 18. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. So the very first textual uh, appearance of the word loves is in, number one, a man with a woman, and this woman happens to be a harlot. Now, if you want to go deeper with that, uh, for our instruction in righteousness, first appearance of loves is with man and Rome, the harlot. Okay? You get it? God loves you? Okay? Nowhere in the very first appearance textually of the word loves can any of you weave in God loves you. Ah, but there's another one. Song of Solomon 7. Song of Solomon 7. Okay? Song of Solomon, chapter 7. Okay? For our instruction in righteousness, 
The Song of Solomon can be equated onto the Lord, Jesus Christ our Father, a Hebrew, not a Hamite, okay? And his love towards his Gentile bride, okay? All right? Because in Song of Solomon, I am black but comely, it's, I believe, a reference onto the daughter of Pharaoh, okay? Who very well, Egyptians are Hamitic, okay? Who very well could have been truly black, okay? All right? Just so you know. All right? So the banter back and forth verbally here is between the beloved, the Lord, and his bride. Okay? So in Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 13, I am my beloved, and his desire is toward me. Okay? Come, my beloved. Let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. The Beloved. Are, are you not accepted in the Beloved? Our Lord Jesus Christ. For our instruction and righteousness. Okay? Let us get up early to the vineyards. And you can tie in with that. Israel and whatnot. Okay? Let us see if the vine flourish. He is the vine. We are the branches. Okay? Whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. Hmm. Now, give thee my loves. Hmm. First of all, who's saying it? Is it the beloved? No. Come, my beloved. Let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Okay? The bride. Groom, okay. Love's there, okay. It has nothing to do with God saying to anybody that He loves you present tense unconditionally, okay. Verse thirteen: The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee. Oh, my beloved. The beloved is the male. The beloved is Solomon. Okay? Instruction and in righteousness. The beloved is who? Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? So, the only two appearances textually of the word loves has nothing to do with God himself ever. God loves you. Okay? Not once. Not one time. Even in instruction and righteousness sake, which we just kind of gleaned over, you cannot tie in God loves you with that. You can't. Well, you can because people are ignorant of Scripture, but in reality, you can't. There, there'll be those uh, videos in the description box for you again. When you go about and preach to people... God loves you, and then you go to John 3.16, you're in the market to make a false convert. You are lying to people. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. Atheists can figure that one out right quick. Okay? All right? Muslims can figure that one out right quick. Your average lost person can usually figure that one out very quick. And hence they point to the hypocrisy of Christians. And you're right. It, you know. Unless, of course, you're a Blackpoolian Englishman who's perfect and without, without any hypocrisy. Yeah. Isaiah 53. Why is John 3.16 not the gospel? Stay to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. You're like, oh, Brad, get... Let's look, dude. The reason why so many of you Christians are messed up in your head is because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Number one, you ain't using the scriptures. Number two, you're going to a phallus house. And number three, you ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. And number four, majority of you are lost. Okay? All right? All right? 
A saint goes to a Christian and tells, tell, talks to them about rightly dividing the word of truth. They look at you as, as if you just farted in their general direction. Isaiah 53. Why? Why is that? Why isn't John 3.16 the gospel for today? Okay? Isaiah 53. Let's begin. Actually, let's begin in Isaiah 52 and then go into uh, Isaiah 53. Oh, by the way, this is milk. <laughs> this is me. All right. You, you, you email me that nonsense. Well, you need to preach John 3.16. That's a guy. You, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> Let's go. Isaiah 52. <clears throat> Verses 13 on to verse 15. Then we're going to read into Isaiah 53. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many, uh, as many were astonished at thee... His visage, visage is the face, okay? His visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. You read in the scriptures where they literally pulled his beard out. Have you ever had any of your hair pulled out in a lump and like a big thing of flesh is on the end of there? It's like, oh, you know, I had that burning, throbbing, okay? They did that to his beard. You know, that disgusting Catholic movie, The Passion of the Christ, that, I believe, and only this, gives us a small idea of what our Lord went through. I, I think it was far worse, because it says right there, his visage, face, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Okay? And I believe that they crucified him naked on the, on the cross. Okay? Beaten to a pulp. His visage was so marred, you couldn't even tell that you were looking at a man. Okay? All right? And see, Catholicism pre presents to you this beautiful-looking Jesus. When the Jesus of reality... Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. See, unto us saints, the Lord Jesus Christ is precious, beautiful. I've never seen him yet. I'm going to at the great, uh, at not great white throne, excuse me, at the uh, judgment seat of Christ, okay? Going to see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ then, okay? But I've never seen him. But yet he is beautiful and glorious unto me, okay? Right here it says, He hath no form nor comeliness, and when he shall see him, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. See, unto the world, unto lost people, Lord Jesus Christ is not an attractive oh, man. Not at all. He is despised and rejected of men. Yes, because the Jesus of the scripture puts his finger on that one thing you lack every single time. That's why people avoid him. And are more ready to accept more ready to accept the God loves you, the, the Jesus who has no standards, the Jesus who, who doesn't judge, the Jesus who never gets angry. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Well, I didn't ask him to do that for me. I, I, that, that's irrelevant. He did it anyway. Why? Because God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense. Okay? 
But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 was reading Isaiah 53. And that was before there was a book of Romans. That was before there was a book of Ephesians. Okay? All right? That's before all that. Talk about conviction. Okay? He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. Dumb means not to speak. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yes, Jesus Christ never sinned. See, that's the thing. The law is there, you know, the Ten Commandments is there to show man that we can't keep them perfectly. You atheists would be like, well, what's the point? The point is to show mankind that you are not your own God and that you need God uh, to be with, you need to be with God. You need to be right with God. That's why the only man who ever kept the Ten Commandments, the law, perfectly was Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God the Father. God is the only one who can keep his perfect commandments. And the law, the Ten Commandments were given to us to show us how frail and how weak we really are. And see, some of you guys out there call that cruel. I call that mercy. I call that a blessing. Because from the garden, you shall be as God. It's like, okay, here are my perfect commandments. And, and, as, and as it says in James, if you break one, you've broken them all. See, you atheists, when it comes to saints, Christians are a totally different thing, okay? <laughs> okay? But see, when it comes to saints and you atheists, throw at us about hypocrisy, well, you don't keep up. We could never keep the Ten Commandments, sir. We can never do that. <laughs> never! Never! Because like it says in James, if you mess up at one point, you messed up in it all. Okay? The Ten Commandments were the perfect requirements of a perfect God. And they were given unto man who thinks they are their own God to show us that we ain't God. Okay? It's very simple. It's very simple. And saints save people. It's like, well, yeah, no one can keep the law. No one can. The only one who could, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. Okay? Yet, verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, his soul, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Who was on the cross? Who, who was on the cross? As I, as I made mention to you, whoever you were, uh, who made the comment about the lamb and the guy and the throne, um, I, I, I will make a video because I gave you my word. But that, that's pretty well covered in who was on the cross. But I, I will. Do the video as I gave you my word. Not yet, though, okay? All right? But, well, okay, uh, wait, wait, I just lost, okay. Verse, verse 10 again. When thou shalt make his soul, one God, Christ of three, okay? Three persons? No. Spirit, soul, and body. Holy Ghost is the Spirit, God the Father is the soul, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, is the body. Okay? It's called the Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God, we have a spirit, soul, and body. Three persons that make one God, that's stupid. And that's satanic. But let's continue. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed... 
He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. We have to go through this process, okay? So bear with me. Romans 15, we want verses 8 on to verse 13. Now, I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, minister of the law unto the Hebraic Jews. We'll touch more on that later. For the truth of God to confirm the promise made unto the fathers, the fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob taken out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line. Okay? Out of Shem, not Ham, bloop, definitely not Japheth, okay? And that the Gentiles, okay, might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. For this cause will I confess thee, thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And what do we read in verse 13? And again, Isaiah, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit. Now, let's look at this again, okay? Jesus Christ, he was a minister unto the circumcision, okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? But in the book of Isaiah, which that is quoting from, um, it is prophesied, number one, we just saw, we just saw that he was going to be rejected. Okay, and you read in John chapter 1, he came unto his own, the Hebraic Jews, and they received him not. Okay, it was prophesied in the Old Testament that God was going to come, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the Mashiach, the Savior, Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves, the Anointed One, Jesus, Jeho Jehovah saves, Mashiach, Christ, the Anointed One, okay, it was prophesied he was going to come. It was also prophesied that he was going to be rejected, he was going to be despised, we just looked at it, and that he was going to die, bury, and rise again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that eventually, us Gentiles were going to have a part of that. What happened? Study to shoot thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A lot of your problems... Number one, you got to get saved, okay? But a lot of your problems, a lot of these contradictions that atheists point out, that Muslims point out, that you Christians are made to look like laughing stocks purposely because you're serving Satan, um, not all of you, let me clarify that, not all of you, but um, if you would rightly divide the word of truth, a whole lot of these issues that these guys come at you with would what could be answered. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. You might be saying, well, okay, Brad, you just said that it was in the scripture and the prophecy they had it written for them, right? Right! What's the problem? They didn't believe. They didn't believe the scriptures. You know, in John chapter 7, I believe it is, our Lord says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. 
and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those guys didn't believe the scripture. They didn't believe it. Okay? Big, big difference. Okay? You, you're right. They had it written down for them, but they didn't believe it. They didn't believe the scripture. Do you believe what you're reading? Now, see, we've covered this before. A Christian knows here to say, well, I do. But then they're presented with a Muslim who knows more of their Bibles than they do. Not the scriptures, their Bibles. Or, or a um, somewhat smart atheist, okay? And they get decimated. <laughs> okay? Why? Because they don't believe it. Let's continue. Whereby when ye read my... Uh, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is this mystery? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Again, do not for one second believe this heresy taught by Stephen Anderson and several others that they, and this is a go-to for these uh, twits who say that's by grace through faith from beginning to end. <laughs> Laugh at these people. Here's a, you know, they say, well, they were looking forward to the cross. And no, they weren't. Uh, which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now this dispensation revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the, by the capitalist spirit himself. Okay? That the Gentiles, that's me, usually most of you, okay? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. There are not two bodies. Okay, you hyper-dispensationalist hyper heretic. There isn't a body of the Jew and a body of the Gentile. There's one body. Okay? Comprised of Jew and Gentile. Hebraic Jew. Okay? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. And that's the Lord in you, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does this mean? Something changed. Something changed. From a transition from one to the other. What is that? Hey, Tom! <laughs> and 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 uh, I'm uh, the, the, even the bloke, even the black Poolian bloke brought this up about how this uh, Tom guy is <laughs> being schooled <laughs> by a Catholic. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, hey Tom, when did the New Testament begin? Any of you? When did the New Testament begin? Council of Nicaea? No. With the birth of Jesus? No. When did the New Testament begin? Hebrews chapter 9. Brethren, I know you might get proud. With, look! I'm out there. You are, need to be out there. Christians don't know this. This is imperative. Okay? We know this. We, in our testimony, in our witness, need to be this, to show this, to tell these people this. Okay? Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, that's on them. But the Christians don't know this stuff, man. That's why we keep bringing it up. You Christians don't know this. You don't. You don't. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 16 on to verse 18. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the birth of the testator, death of the testator. Again, you can use this more against the December the 25th Mass. Okay? Okay, and we're not going to go off on that. Okay, but I mean, the death of the testator. For a testament is a force af 
after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. It is expedient for me that I go away. You know, the Lord's like, you know, it's, it's expedient for me that I go away. More proof that they were not looking forward to the cross. Because he's like, look, this is, this is what's supposed to be happening. Okay? And if they knew, if they were looking forward to the cross, they would be like, we know, Lord. We're, we're going to miss you, but we know this is for, for because, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. They weren't like that. Okay? Never fall, dear Christian. Uh, for this stupid, they were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden and the patriarchs. and under the, No, they weren't. No, they weren't. That's a lie to set up heresy and to deceive you. Okay? Whereupon, verse 18, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Verse 17, for a testament is, uh, is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ brought in the New Testament this dispensation. So what does that mean? Well, at his first coming when he was alive, okay, the law was still binding because before the death, burial, and resurrection, the perfect... Atonement for sin had yet to be made. Hence, it was still doctrinally under the law before the death, burial, and resurrection. Dude, that is as simple as I could put it to you. Okay? That is as simple as I could put it to you. Okay? That, that's, that's very important to remember. Especially when you encounter atheists who think they know something. Or Muslims or morons, Mormons, or Jehos, or stuff like that. They're crazy anyway. Okay, and uh, the Mormon church is the, uh, one of the richest in America. Of course, the Vatican is the richest. And like I said in the um, uh, community section, brother, they wouldn't let me put the picture up. So anyway, that's a little uh, rabbit trail, okay? Rightly dividing. When the Lord was first here on the earth, at his first coming, the law was still binding. Okay? He came offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people, the Hebraic Jewish people. But as it is prophesied, as we saw, he came here for one purpose. To die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Go to Matthew chapter 10 now. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We want verses 5 on to verse 8. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, not 9, Brad. Verses 5 on to verse 8. Let me prove to you through Scripture that what the Scriptures tell you is truth. That before the death, death burial, and resurrection, Matthew 10, verses 5 on to verse 8. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand kingdom of heaven in the book of Matthew. It only appears in the book of Matthew. Okay? In the scriptures. I don't know about the Bibles. But in the scripture, it only appears kingdom of heaven in the book of Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is always every single time without exception. Reference onto a physical literal kingdom that will be in Jerusalem with Jesus Christ as king sitting on a throne. Okay? All right? He was there first. Look at this. Okay? Oh, let's read verse 8. And remember, the Jews require a sign. The Greeks 
Gentiles seek after wisdom. The Jews require a sign. You can see that. You can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Okay? The Jews require a sign. Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Okay? What wisdom are they seeking? And as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely have, freely ye have received, freely give. Casting out devils, the healing of the sick, were signs for the Hebraic Jewish people. Signs showing them that, hey, the Mashiach, God the Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is right there, and he's offering to you the promised kingdom of David, the kingdom of heaven with him, the son of David, ruling on the throne, okay? That's what he was doing before his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Okay? Uh, again, we read this yesterday, but we're hitting it again. Uh, Amos chapter 9, Amos chapter 9. Okay, you know, it, you as you say something like that to me, okay, you, you need to preach the gospel, it's John 3, 16. This is what you get, okay? This is what you get. Amos 9, 11 and 12. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, ruins, I said that purposely. And I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. That kingdom of heaven, David sitting on his throne, the son of David, that's what that means. Not his actual son. Son of David, when you hear that, that's a reference unto his kingship. Okay, And only the Jews... The Hebraic Jews are the ones who are entitled, who have the right to say that of Jesus. We'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. But see, that's what Jesus came here to do. For. He came here to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. Absolutely. But he came offering that, the physical, literal kingdom, onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? Now, this is also, I mean, he was offering that, but this specifically in that day will I raise up the tabernacle. He was offering before the death, burial, and resurrection. When will the Lord raise up that tabernacle? Actually, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open. This is the second coming, okay? And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, whereas that man of sin, the son of perdition, has a crown. Okay? Has a crown. He has many crowns. Okay? And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture and article of clothing, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Capital W. The final of seven times, capital W in Scripture. Every time you see a capital W in Scripture, it's always a reference onto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Them people at uh, Shepherd's Chapel, which will be addressed in a video this week, Lord willing, uh, purposely obscure that, okay? It's a reference onto the Lord Jesus Christ when you see the capital W word of God. Okay? Just so you know that. All right? And the word, John chapter 1, okay? It's interesting. Every appearance of capital W word uh, has a tie-in with that disciple whom Jesus loved, John. Check for yourself. Okay? Uh, check the community section. Uh, I believe they're all listed. But don't worry, you're only ever as relevant as your latest video. Make another one with them, okay? So let's continue. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us! That's us! 
we get come up hither in Revelation chapter 4 1. Okay? We get call, called up, come up hither. We come back down with him as his army. Okay? Okay, that's that's us. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Okay? Now, I have seen you uh, YouTube, Google pictures where uh, the Roman Catholic Jesus actually. No. The sword of the Spirit. Okay, this is a reference onto the scripture itself, the authorized version. You read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Okay, you read in Ephesians, uh, with, uh, having on the helmet of God um, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the lowercase w word of God. Okay, so when it says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. It means it's a reference onto the scripture. The Lord is going. This, this, the authorized version is the standard that God is going to judge us and you by, people. Okay? So when it says a sword is going out of his mouth, he's, it's a reference onto the scripture. He's going to be speaking the word, the scripture, judging. That's what that means. It's not the literal picture of the Roman Catholic Jesus with the sword coming out of his mouth. No, no. It's referencing, he's going, this, this, the authorized version, is the standard that you and I, all of us, is going to be judged by. Okay? All right, that's what that means. Make no mistake about it. Okay? All right. And out of his mouth, verse 15, go with a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a piece of clothing on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And, uh, okay? Lord of Lords. Okay? The second coming. All right? Now go back to Matthew chapter 15. Okay? Matthew chapter 15. All right? He came as the Lamb, offering the kingdom of heaven, knowing that they were going to reject it. But see, here, here's the thing that you atheists need to chew on. If the Lord didn't offer it, then you could say he's not fair, right? Come on! You guys kind of so logical sniffling piece of snot out of the waters billions of years. But hey, you're logical, right? He knew that they were going to reject it. See, you and I as man, it's like, well, I wouldn't do that. His ways are not our ways. Praise the Lord. Okay? He offered it to them anyway, knowing that they were going to reject it. If he didn't do that, you could say that he wasn't fair. Like you guys do anyway. But he is fair. See, that's how that works. If he didn't, you'd be able to level up accusation. Well, you you didn't even offer it to me. Okay? Matthew 15, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then, uh, am I in the right place? I'm using a different set of scriptures, okay? Uh, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, Canaanite, a woman of Canaan, a Gentile, okay, came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Here you have a Gentile. Referring on to the Lord as the son of David. Well, hey, that's being respectful. Keep reading. Keep reading. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. Almost, it's like, ignored her. She called him the son of David. She acknowledged his kingship. What's the problem? 
What's the problem? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. Um, it's not that our Lord is mean or anything. No, it's Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 8 again. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the Jew first. Okay? And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom, is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely ye give, because the Jews require a sign. So you see here, go back to Matthew 15, you see a Gentile woman taking upon herself to call him the son of David. But he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the Jew first. Okay? Okay? See, you guys, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, or else you're going to be fodder for atheists, Muslims, Jehos, and, and it's you guys who do not rightly divide the word of truth that make the saints look bad. Okay, never mind Christianity. Okay? But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And before he said, well, well, what we already read in Romans 15, what happened? The death, burial, and resurrection. This dispensation came in with the shedding of the blood on the cross, the atonement for our sins. You have to write divide the word of truth or else you're going to God's going to be ashamed of you God's going to be ashamed of you and the atheists and the Muslims and all kinds of people can tear you apart with your God loves you for something that isn't doctrinally viable for us today in this dispensation okay <laughs> okay let's continue Let's continue. We're, we're, we're not done in Matthew chapter 15. Okay. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now, you hoity-toity uh, uh, atheists, <laughs> no such thing, come to that. He called her a dog. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But see, God so loved that he gave. He gave you a way out. You have a way out. But you want to be, you want to be your own God. You love sin. But see, see, this, <laughs> if God never offered the kingdom of heaven, knowing that they were going to reject it, he wouldn't be fair. Okay? He called her a dog, but if he didn't make provision for even us, the Gentile dogs, to be part of the tree of the Jew, then he wouldn't be fair, would he? That's why people, you know, when you encounter a Calvinist, and it's like, your God is cruel. And yes, the God of Calvinism, uh, Mr. Dudley Do-Right Villain, um, is a cruel God, okay? Because the God of Calvinism elects and not elects. He elects people to go to hell. He elects people to go to heaven, okay? That's a God of cruelty. That's a God of coercion. The God of the Scriptures doesn't work that way. He's fair. Are not his ways equal? Your ways are unequal. See, you guys try to lower God down to your level and make him just like you. Ain't happening. Yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, yes. But see, he did something that none of us have ever done. He never sinned. That's why the sagging skin suit, you idiot fledgling, was perfect. Even though itself the flesh was sinful. Okay? Alright, let's continue. 
And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Now, here's something that might be tricky, but, okay, we just went over a basic thing about rightly dividing the word of truth. When did this dispensation, the New Testament, begin? Come on, come on, come on. You, we, we are, come on, with the death of the testator. The death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, the bloodshed on the cross. Had it happened yet? No. Now, Uh, what, uh, what, what were we reading to again? Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. What was her faith in? The death bear... How? Come on! Sleazy believest! Easy believism! Devil heretic! Come on! Come on. How could her faith, being a Gentile, and we already read Ephesians chapter 3, how could her faith be in the death, burial, and resurrection? How is that possible? When his own didn't even know about it. Explain that to me. How her, how could this Gentile's faith be in the death, burial, and resurrection? How? How? Gotcha. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. So, if it wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection at this time, because, come on, you easy believest free gracers. Come on. Did he die, buried, and raised again the third day according to the scriptures? Did you already proved on numerous, even in this video, that they weren't. Looking forward to the cross in the garden, in the patriarchs, and in the law. They weren't. It was not in his death, burial, and resurrection. It couldn't have been. So, so okay. Then what, what, was the, what was the faith in then? Right? Right? Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. I'm not using a copy of the scriptures that I usually use, so bear with me. Okay? Mark chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 30. A telling of this again. And from that, and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Gentile, okay? And as we already looked at, Jesus Christ came first to the Jew, offering them the kingdom of heaven. He was sent unto the lost, sent unto no one, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? So a Gentile coming along, Calling him that, it's like, no, 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 okay, no. And see, you, you atheists, it's like, well, that's, no, that's not cruel. He's being fair because if he didn't offer it onto them, even though he knew they were going to reject it, he wouldn't be fair. And with the death, burial, and resurrection, that has made way for us Gentiles to be part of that. See, you, see, you atheists, you're attacking the God of Christianity usually. Okay, usually you are. Some of you do go after uh, the God of the Scriptures. Um, I mean, but usually when you boil it right down to it, the, the atheists are attacking the God of Christianity. And you know what? Go for it, dude. Go for it. I, I do. Okay, go for it. 
because the God of Christianity is not the God of the Scriptures. Okay? Okay? All right? The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. Okay? And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out of her daughter. Uh, and when she came, and when she was come, excuse me, to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Okay. Now, now let's let's look at Mark chapter ten. Mark chapter ten. Okay. Verses seventeen on to verse 21, uh, twenty-two. Excuse me. Mark chapter ten, verses seventeen on to verse twenty-two. Okay, Mark chapter not nine, you idiot. <laughs> Mark chapter ten, verses seventeen on to verse twenty-two. And when he was gone forth into the way, this is a, a Hebraic Jew, by the way, the rich young ruler. Okay, go with me here. Come on, come on. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him. And asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This was the rich young ruler who should have known who he was talking to. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And atheists and others like to attack that. It's like, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Here is a Hebraic Jew who was supposed to know who he was talking to. But he didn't. He saw only good master. He didn't have eyes to see that it was the Mashiach, God the Father, standing before him. Okay? And check this out. Our Lord calls him on this. It's like, thou knowest the commandments. So see, this rich young ruler had access to the scriptures. He knew what they said. But see, he didn't believe it. This, this rich young ruler knew, knew the scriptures, obviously. Thou knowest the commandments. And where do you find the commandments? In the scriptures, okay? <laughs> do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. He knew. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things, all these have I observed from my youth. I've done all that. How can ye believe? Ye who seek honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. And that which is highly esteemed of men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe? Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, loved him. How do you love your enemies? Put the finger on what they need. One thing you lack. I see, this, the Jesus of the scriptures isn't this bro-hug, sappy, sissy thing that Christianity tells you it is. Jesus Christ of the scriptures he is God the Father. And you go to him. He is going to put his finger on that one thing that you lack. That's why so many Christians, never mind the, those who are, you know, like atheists and all that. That's why so many avoid this Jesus of the scriptures who is God the Father, the real God. Because he gonna get you. He's gonna. That's why you avoid the scriptures. You're educated people, okay? You're progressive. Yet these and thous and begats throws you off, and you're the smart one. Give me a break, okay? 
Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way. This is what the rich young ruler loved. Sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And the cross is death. Death to yourself. Okay? And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved. Why? For he had great possessions. Read verse 23. Even if I didn't mark it there. Read verse 23. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Now, do you remember what just was said a little while ago? How that scripturally the kingdom of heaven is always a reference unto the physical, literal kingdom, but kingdom of God usually is a reference unto the what? The spiritual kingdom. You might be thinking, what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? Before the death, burial, and resurrection, what was their faith in, supposed to be in? What God was going to do, be their king. That, that was, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That God the Father is before them. Okay, that's, that's, that's what, they were supposed, that was the faith aspect during this while Jesus Christ was on the earth. Okay, the law was still binding. The law was still binding. Okay, but their faith was supposed to be in their king who was right before this guy but didn't have eyes to see because he cared about the things of the world. That's why Jesus said, why call us army good? There's none good but one. That's God. And that's God the Father. See, the rich young ruler didn't get it. Get it? Do you get it? Okay. And he knew the commandments. He, he was versed in the scriptures. Just like the scribes and Pharisees were. But they didn't believe it. Okay. That, that's pretty simple. Check this out. Check this out, the, the beautiful contrast of this. Here's someone who had the education, who had the, uh, your best life now, all the stuff that the world had. Blessed are the poor in spirit, okay? Um, he had all this stuff, yet, and he knew, he knew. He knew all these things I've done, but he didn't believe it. Now, 46 on to 52 in this same chapter. Check this out. And they came to Jericho. 46 under the close, uh, which is verse 52. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. A blind guy, a beggar. I know one, a small guy. Got a little guy. Okay. Got a little guy. Little guy. Got a little guy. Okay. Here's, you know, he went to his own, the guys who should have known this, because they had the scriptures, they knew, but they didn't believe it. Here he comes across Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. Begging. Begging. And when he, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Now, the good, the rich young ruler came to God the Father and said, Good Master. And the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is like, why, why are you calling me good? I'm, I'm God. <laughs> okay? No, I'm God. I'm the Father. Okay? Why are you calling me good? Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm your Father. I'm the Messiah. Okay, the rich young ruler didn't see that. He had eyes to see. He had physical eyes. Then, oh, I'm not going to get ahead of myself here, okay? Some of you already got this. Especially you two who were sent to notes for this. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So you have a Hebraic Jew, blind, poor, beggar, Jesus, thou son of David. 
The rich young ruler who should have known, who knew the commandments, the Pharisees and scribes, they knew it, but they didn't believe it. They should have known, but they didn't see it. The, the, uh, the Gentile, she got it, but he, he wasn't sent to you. He wasn't sent to us yet. Okay? It was, it was still, the law was still binding. It was still under the law. He was sent to the Jews, to Israel, not to us Gentiles yet. Okay? And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Twice mentioned. Ooh, twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. Ha <laughs> yeah. Twice mentioned for that one. Okay. So twice. Jesus, thou son of David. When Israel reads Psalm 102. Okay, Psalm 102. When Israel, when Jewry, but thou, O Lord, when Israel will acknowledge her king. <laughs> and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Don't, for one second, look at that. Look at what we've just gone over. Pause the video and muse on this. When an, a son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as it were, okay, when they Hebraic Jew, who was blind, poor, a beggar, knew that it was Jesus, the Mashiach, Jesus, thou son of David, my God and my king, my Lord and my God, my king. And Jesus stood still. He stopped. It's like, whoa. One of my brethren, one of my people are acknowledging me. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, cast away his garment, cast everything away, rose and came to Jesus, forsake everything, and went to the Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What, what wilt thou that I shall, should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Don't miss that, man. Okay, don't miss that. He couldn't see with his actual physical eyes. But he saw with the eye, with spiritual eyes. He knew that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He knew God manifest in the flesh. He knew he had the eye spiritually to see the Mashiach. Whereas the rich young ruler who should have known, who had everything at his disposal, didn't see him. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith, now do you get it, hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Okay, now, hey, 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 sleazy believer, fake gracer. How, how could the faith there be in the death, burial, and resurrection, which have, are, has already been proven to you, they were not looking forward to that, they didn't know about it, and it didn't happen yet. How could it be? By grace through faith. How could it be in the death, burial, and resurrection? It can't be. The faith that they needed to have was in what God was going to do. Okay? The law was still binding because someone likes to say that what? The fourth dispensation was the three and a half year ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Because the law was still binding. 
Okay? You read that he told people to go give uh, the, tes the sacrifice of Moses as a testimony against them. Okay? Why? Because he hadn't shed his blood yet. So the law was still binding. Okay? All right? But they had to have the faith that, hey, he was who he said he was. Which Jewry as a nation rejected. Is this okay? Okay? Is, is this making sense to you now? I, 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 I'm sorry if that comes off as, you know, I, I don't mean that. I don't mean it to be like that. But see, John, oh, John chapter 9. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Verses 39 on to verse 41. John chapter 9, verses 39 on to verse 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see might, that they which see, wait, wait hold on. This, and Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world. Yes, Jesus came for judgment. That they which see not, might see. So those who see not might see. The blind guy. But yet he had spiritual eyes to see. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Mashiach. And they which see might be made blind. Oh, oh hold your place. Come on. Those that see, you atheists. <laughs> uh, you Christians, huh? Yeah. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. <laughs> And that they which see might be made blind. Pharisees, Sadducees, hey, you atheists, you have your eyes are open because you disregard God. You did contrary to what He said. So you're your own. You're your own God. These were the people who should have known. Hey, you're educated. You can't. You can't figure this out. Hey, you have eyes to see. You, you can see. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Look at the arrogance that, of that statement. Are we blind also? Hey, Pharisees. Hey, hey I, I thank God that I am not like other men are. I fast twice in the week. I give. Ties of all I possess. I'm glad I'm not like other people, especially like this publican. Publican wouldn't even look up to heaven. God, be merciful to me. So. He who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay? He who humbles himself shall be exalted. Okay? He who humbles himself not, but exalts himself shall be abased. Pharisees. Hey, we, we're, we're the Pharisees. We should know. Hey, we blind? Jesus answered them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. You don't know what sin is until it's told you, right? That's the purpose of the law, like I said, you know. You know, you atheists aren't uh, innocent. You, you're not, you can't say, no one at the great white throne of judgment, you guys who don't get caught up, you know, the judgment seat of Christ is for us saved people, us saints. Uh, you're not going to say before the Lord, I never heard the gospel. How can I be able to say that? And because if you could say that, then God would be fair. Jesus said unto them, if ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say we see. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Therefore your sin remaineth. John 18. 
John 18. We, we, like I told you, we have to go through this process, okay, to show to you, to demonstrate to you scripturally, okay? John 18, verses 3 on to verse 5. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. Cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. And what are we reading to? Verse 5. Stood with them, yes. And let's read verse 6. As soon as he, uh, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. I am he. Why is that significant? Oh, go to John chapter 8. And here's a, here's a good spit at you crazy Trinitarians. John chapter 8, verses 23 and 24. See, they needed to, when Jesus Christ was offering them the kingdom of heaven, it was in what their faith was supposed to be in what he was going to do, be their king. The law was still binding. It was still under the law, the dispensation of the law. I totally reject that. Preposterous. I understand, but I reject it. I don't agree with that. Okay, and of course that guy called me a heretic, he calls me a heretic anyway. But, okay, I don't agree with that at all. I think that's stupid. Okay, that his three and a half year ministry was one of the seven. Uh, no, 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 I don't agree with that at all. Why? Because the law was still binding. The death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Okay, but John chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 24. And he said unto them, Ye, remember, ye is more than one. Uh, wait, 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 I just lost my place. Okay. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, Ye shall die in your sins. I am He, God the Father, the Mashiach, the Messiah. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You get it? He was, he was he's the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, offering them the kingdom of heaven and what He was going to do, be the king. So, the faith before the death, burial, and resurrection could, could not have been in the death and burial and resurrection when he was offering the kingdom of heaven on to the Hebraic Jews. It couldn't have been. What was their faith in? Huh? In God. That he was their king. While under the law. This isn't rocket scientists stuff here, man. Okay? All right? Now, th um, let me see. Uh, in John chapter 18, go back, go to verses 33 on to verse uh, 37 now. In John chapter 18, verses 33 on to verse 37. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Yes. He's king of kings, lord of lords. But remember, as we have been going over, before the death, burial, and the resurrection, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom. Okay? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell this, tell it? Excuse me. Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? A little sarcasm there. Okay? 
A little sarcasm. Yes, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ was sarcastic. Okay? Okay, not as bad as some of us. Of course not, but... <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? See, the Lord is being a little sarcastic there. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Look at his response. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. Not there present yet. The physical, literal kingdom wasn't there yet. Okay? If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. Now that's not a reference unto the spiritual, but that's a reference unto the physical. Because, look at, look at the verse. You know, we're not fighting for a physical kingdom here today. Rome is! Okay? Not us. Okay? His kingdom... Not, uh, but now is my kingdom not from hence. The actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven because he's going to the cross. Okay? Okay? You get it? I hope so. It's pretty simple. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou king then? Jesus answered him, Jesus answered, Thou sayest, I am a king. Don't, don't miss that. Don't miss the I am's in John. Okay? Oh, oh, and for you atheists. Uh, you're right. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. Jesus never said, listen to me, I am God. He said, I am. That's all he needed to say. I am. That's why Joel Osteen, with his stupid... Uh, or that evil book, The Three Magic Words, I Am God. You know, I'll play, you know the power of I Am, even Oprah Winfrey, uh, uh, Windbag got involved in that nonsense. Okay, that's blasphemy. Jesus never said, I am God. He didn't need to. All he had to say is, I am. Calling himself the Father. So when you're in the book of John in the authorized version... Don't ever miss the IMs. You know what you do? It would be good for you to get one of these gel thingies and mark individually the IMs. You should do that sometime, brother. Or, or with you, because yours is really well colored, uh, use your pen or something like that. You know, try that. See, it's amazing. And there is some sort of numerical value to it, uh, which a dear brother would be able to answer, not me. The, numer the numerology of scripture thing is <laughs> oh, way above my head, okay? So, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I, in, came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He was going to go to the cross, but he still hadn't died, buried, and rose again, according to the scripture, he said. He was bleeding like a stuck pig. We already read about that in Isaiah 53. But he wasn't, didn't go to the cross yet. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find no fault in him at all. I find no fault. It's like, dude, what, 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 what are you guys doing? Okay? What are you guys doing here? Okay? I had to read that for you. I know I said on verse 37. Now, John chapter 19. Here's what happened. The guys who had eyes who were supposed to see... John 19, verses 8, under verse 15. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Where, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, 
Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Pilate didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't. Yeah, I mean, he really didn't. He thought he did. He's like, scratch it. Keep reading. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Yes, because they should have known. They had the prophecy of Isaiah 53. It wasn't Isaiah 53 back then. You're right, okay? But they had it, okay? They had it. They had the scriptures. But they didn't get it. Hence, they delivered their king, prophesied as it was to happen that way. Okay? That's why he says, Thou couldst have no power at all against me. He was wounded for our transgressions. When he sees the anguish of his soul, he'll be satisfied. I just realized that. Okay? Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin, greater sin. You shall be as gods, knowing then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing uh, good and evil. Are we blind too? Yeah. If you were blind, you'd have no sin. But now you say you see, therefore your sin remains. Do you get it? Do you, come on, man. That that's uh, <laughs> that's. Oh, let's keep reading. And from, that, from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou, look at this manipulation tactic. If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh him a king, maketh, maketh himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Hold your king. Yeah, you want sin. Yeah, you are your own God. You are your own standard. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? King of the Jews. Lord of lords, king, Lord of lords, king of kings, yes. King of the Jews, to the Jew first. I think we categorically have proven that to you so far. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh, before before we before we read that, okay, okay, and hey, you atheists, okay, all right, all right. Isaiah fourteen, Isaiah fourteen, got to, got to, it's me. Isaiah fourteen, verses thirteen and fourteen. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Shall I crucify your king? Yeah. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. There you go, man. John chapter 1, just one verse. John chapter 1. One verse, verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Why, why, why did we look at that, Brad? Why did we look at that? Hmm? Genesis chapter 22. See, before the death, burial, and resurrection, he came offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebrew Jewish people. 
prophesied that he was going to die, but he came to die to make reconciliation for sin. Okay, the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Genesis 22, just one verse. Verse 8. Genesis 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself, himself, a lamb. I just lost my place. And Abraham said, My God, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Himself. He himself. Who was on the cross? See, son, or uh, whoever you were about that, that question you asked me about how he's on the throne and the lamb, that it's it's uh, you know. Okay? How is God the Father in heaven yet on the cross? How is God the Father in heaven yet on the earth in the Garden of Gethsemane? Okay? Okay? God will provide himself. Himself. A lamb. Okay? All right? Now, after the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel... 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, like the easy believest people. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, we're looking forward to the cross, okay? How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Well, what about the blood? What about the... the someone, well, what's the gospel? Go to there. Then expound on it, Okay? Okay, you, you talk about people uh, straining at a net and swallowing a camel. Okay? Now, let's go now to John chapter 3. Because you're probably wondering, it's like, Brad, you, we haven't gotten... No, we had to go through that to demonstrate to you without a shadow of a doubt what was going on. Okay? Now that we know this, now that we have demonstrated it, through scripture. Now. Now. John chapter 3. Verses 5 on to verse 21. Jesus answered. Talking to Nicodemus. A master of Israel. Okay. Jesus answered. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Singular. Except a man be born of water. Naturally born, we're all, you know, we're all born of water. This is nothing to do with water baptism, you, you satanic heretic. Okay? Nothing. Nothing to do with water baptism, Catholic. Pentecostal. Okay, uh, what's, uh, what's the Robertson guy? Um, Church of Christ. Okay? <laughs> when you come out of the matrix, you know, when the matrix the, uh, of the woman... Okay, not Keniano Reeves. The water breaks. Okay, that's what this is talking about. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, mankind, and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the capital S spirit, the Lord himself is lowercase s spirit. Hmm. So also this shows us that Fluffy isn't going to be in heaven with you. Fritz isn't going to be in heaven with you. 
Xena is not going to be in heaven with you. Man, mankind was made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Animals don't. They have a spirit and they have a body. They don't have a soul. Find it for me in scripture. You'll find the opposite in Ecclesiastes, and we'll leave it at that. Okay? Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, more than one, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth? So is every one that is born of the capital S spirit. Nicodemus, master of Israel, who knew this stuff, but yet didn't have eyes to see, even though he saw. We've already covered this, see? Nicodemus answered and said on them, How can these things be? I love this. Jesus answer, answered and said unto him, <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. You're right, brother, sorry. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? He did. Had scriptures. The Old Testament scriptures. How can these things be? See, the fact that Nicodemus, number one, went at night to conceal himself, but the fact that he went spoke more volumes of Nicodemus than the rest of the Pharisees. I believe Nicodemus is in heaven. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? If you don't believe that you've done wrong in your life, how are you ever going to be able to even have the grasping concept to believe in something bigger than yourself? Atheist. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, when you read in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, about the kingdom of heaven, okay, the Lord Jesus Christ is on the earth. The dispensation after the kingdom of heaven is eternity, hence eternal life. Okay? All right? Question. Did the death Come on. Did the death, burial, and resurrection happen yet? So were the believing in him as the lamb which they did not know of or that he, number one, he's talking to a Jew, Nicodemus. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Speaking unto a Jew who, before the death, burial, and resurrection, was offering the kingdom of heaven. For God so loved, past tense. We've looked at loves. Okay, check out the videos by Brother Alexander B. Hartley and the God Loves You video. If you don't want to do that and keep after that stuff, then shut up. Attack the Christians on that all day. Go ahead. But when you try to equate that to us saints, you shut up. Okay? This is why, Brother, with that, with that one video you sent me, it's, it's like he said, God loves you. No, no, to shut, no, 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 no. No. And see, they come to this 
and they try to squeeze in God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Had the death, burial, and resurrection happened yet? No. What if, it was prophesied it wasn't, but let's, let's play what if. What if Israel did accept their king? None of, none of this would have happened. Okay? Kingdom of heaven would have started right there. Okay? This belief here in this context is not in the death, burial, and resurrection, which they didn't know about and hadn't happened yet. Okay? There's a place for it. We, we discussed that already. Okay? Here's your answer. God so loved the world. Okay, that he gave. Okay? You don't start out with something doctrinally that isn't for us. You come to this when someone is in that area of uh, not being broken and being broken. Okay? Even when broken, it's like... And then that's when you continue from verse 19 under the close of the chapter in Romans chapter 3. Because brokenness is there. Okay? Then it's like, okay, hey, hey, dude. It's like, it's like, like I've experienced. It's like, hey, hey, dude, don't, don't worry. God so loved that he gave... There's, there's an answer to your problem. There's a remedy. There's a solution. You don't have to go jumping off a building. Okay? John 3.16, people, is not the gospel. Let's continue. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now there, making a reference on to what was to come. But see, here's what you're not, here's what you're not intuiting, you Christians. And here's the truth of the matter. The death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. He's, I believe that is a clear, it's like the whole world encompassing us Gentiles. And this doesn't mean that everybody's already saved and doesn't know it yet. That's, come on. I, everybody's saved. I, I, I gotta mention this guy's name again. You're going to try to tell me that Dade Murphy is saved and he just don't know it yet. Even he would look at you and be like, excuse you? <laughs> excuse me? Who has made him made it very clear that he doesn't want Jesus, okay? You, and I see some of you nitwit freight gracer idiots would say, well, he just, he's saved and he doesn't. No. No. That's, that's on the lines of, hey, hey. Is Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, the most dangerous man on earth? Is he saved and just doesn't know it yet? Is he really saved and just... Come on. Come on. I think you need to pull your head out of somewhere. Okay? Let's continue. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Now see, to look at this, it's like, yes. Belief. His grace, our faith. Okay? But what is our faith in today? Okay? Let's keep reading, okay? All right? But see, there again. It's finished. The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed. It's finished. Come on, dude. Come on. He, he hasn't died yet. Okay? He's making reference onto it. Yes, he does. And we're going to see this. But he hadn't done it yet. John 3.16 is not the gospel, people. Okay? 
He's making reference, yes. But this is not the gospel. Why? Because there's no death, burial, and resurrection, and there's no blood. <laughs> okay. Now, he alludes to the cross. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He doesn't mention it. He alludes to it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. We're going to see that. But it hadn't happened yet, people. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. It's like when the redemption of the purchased possession happens. Everything, history, is going to change dramatically. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19. What are we reading to? On to verse 21. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You like sin. You want sin. You don't want the true God, the Savior, Jesus Christ. You are your own God. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And you look in John chapter 1, there are four appearances of capital L, light. Reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ. He is that light, that light and that lighteneth the world. Okay? Neither cometh to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. Educated, educated atheists. Educated atheists who are progressive, huh? Yet you come to the authorized version. I can't understand it. You're, you're an educated man. You, you pride yourself. I went to college. I got a college education. Yeah, you're smart. Man's getting better. Uh, these and thou throw you off. Beg your pardon. Don't give me that. Mr. Intellectual. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. That's why you guys hate the authorized version. Because even Satan knows that the authorized version here, this is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. Every Bible that comes out compares itself to the authorized version, dude. Okay? Every Bible that comes out claims to be an uh, upgrade to the authorized version. It began with Westcott and Hart with their reviled substandards version. Okay? Okay? See, Nicodemus, he wanted to know. You and I as saints, we don't run from the word because our Lord speaks to us through the word. Okay? You Christians, you lost people. I can't understand. Yes, you can. Now, granted, the deeper things of Scripture, you need the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. But, I mean, to understand Romans 1, 2, and 3, okay, you can understand that. I've seen it many a times. I've experienced it. Okay, in this very apartment, out there witnessing to people, okay, when the light comes on, lost people can understand Romans 1, 2, and 3. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, you can. The deeper things of Scripture, no, you're not going to get. You need the Lord, the Spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. But things like Romans 1, 2, and 3, you can get it. I've seen it. Don't tell me. Don't know. I can't. Yeah, you can. You just don't want to. You just don't want to, dude. Okay? And look at Luke 19 again. What, what was that? Luke 19, verses 12 on to verse 14? Luke 19, verses 12 on to verse 14. Hmm. We have no king but Caesar. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will exalt your throne above the stars of God. Uh, Luke 19, verses 12 on to verse 14. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country 
to receive for himself a kingdom. Reference, you know, you can put into that the kingdom of heaven. And to return. Or the spiritual, but we'll keep reading. And he called him, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten, ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Okay? This is more reference onto his, on the spiritual, but the point is, verse 14, but his citizens hated him. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh, we already read in John chapter 9, John chapter 9, uh, let's cross-reference that, 39 on the verse 4, 41, John chapter 9, Verses 39 on the first 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? <laughs> Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say we see. Therefore your sin remaineth. Luke 19, verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man reign over us. Uh, elsewhere it says, Let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. He shall be as gods, only good and evil. Okay? Matthew 4. Matthew 4. There comes up this issue about, well, the, go the, the gospel of the kingdom. Gospel of the kingdom, right? Okay? Gospel of the kingdom. Okay? It's kingdom gospel. We're, we're supposed to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, the physical one, or the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual one. Okay? And uh, I will, we'll get to that one. Uh, hold on. We'll get there. My, uh, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 23. From that time, Jesus began to repent. Uh, excuse me. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Excuse me. See? Keep an eye on me. And say, and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand physical, literal kingdom. With him as king sitting on the throne. Okay? Elsewhere it says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The spiritual aspect. What does that mean? Hey! He's the king. You better believe that's the king that was prophesied to come to you. Under the law. Okay? You read Romans chapter 8 and Galatians 3 or 4 where he was made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? All right, the law is still binding. And Jesus went by the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Shimon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren. Now this one doesn't have the pronunciation, but it's three syllables. James, the son of Zebedi, or Zebedi, three syllables, the syllable thing, brother. And John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedi, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and, and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What kingdom? The physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Okay? Starts with Matthew for a reason. Okay? Not because the satanic Catholic Church had it that way. They would have it to be marked so they can twist it. The Lord chose Matthew because Jesus came first to the circumcision, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, offering them the physical, literal kingdom of heaven, people! 
And see, Israel had to believe that he is the Mashiach, the son of David, the king of Israel, the king of the Jews. Okay, hence, kingdom of God. And after the death, burial, and resurrection, the kingdom of God, spiritual. This isn't, this isn't rocket scientist stuff here. Okay? All right. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Why? Because the Jews require a sign. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 32 on to verse 35. Matthew chapter 9, verses 32 on to verse 35. And they went out. I'm in the right place, right? Yes. And they went out. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. Dumb mean, obviously, not being able to speak. And the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisee said on but the Pharisee said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. Now, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, uh, whatever, okay, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is only mentioned by the Lord Jesus and is only applicable when Jesus Christ is physically present on the earth, as he will be during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And Jesus went about all their cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What kingdom? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Okay? Among the people. On to verse uh, 35. Okay? Kingdom of heaven. Okay? Now, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, okay? And people who tell you that Christians are going through the great tribulation don't rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 is, number one, the Lord talking to the Jews, okay? Doctrinally, still under the law, still in the Old Testament, describing the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for Jacob. Who's Jacob? Israel. Okay. Matthew 24, verses 33 under verse 6. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. Tell who? He was sent to who? Only the Jews. The Hebraic Jews. Tell us, the Jews. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign? The Jews require a sign of thy coming, second coming. He was obviously right there. Okay? And the end of the world. Okay? And there will be a second earth, a new earth. Okay? All right? Uh, that's Revelation 21 or 22. Okay? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, anointed one, and shall deceive many. Okay, and, and what are we on verse 6, okay? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, he's speaking on to the Jews, telling them about the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, in Luke, where something similar is that, he's explaining the kingdom of God, the spiritual before the death, burial and resurrection. Okay? This isn't, this isn't difficult. This isn't difficult. Now, while we're in Matthew 24 verses 13 and 14, here's the difference. See, today, in this dispensation, after the death, burial and resurrection, Bloodshed on the cross. When you go the elected way of the cross, and the cross is death, okay? The significance of the cross, okay? Writing this down, okay? Significance of the cross, okay? The cross is death, 
okay? Today, in this dispensation, we don't have to endure to the end. Why? Because we're once saved, always saved. We're sealed until the day of redemption. We do not have to endure to the end. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, where eternal security will not be there except for the 144,000 Hebraic Jews, eternal security is not there like it is here today. This is the only dispensation there that's like that except for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We do not have to endure to the end to be saved for anything today. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We're seated with the Lord in heavenly places already. Okay? So, when you come to Matthew 24 and read 13 and 14, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We don't have to endure unto the end today at all to be saved. Because we're sealed until the day of redemption. The dispensation has changed. During the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to endure to the end. What's the end? Jesus Christ comes back. The second coming. And this gospel of the kingdom. What kingdom? Well, see, okay, you've, with what we've gone through, you ought to have to be able to figure this out, okay? When Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming, he's coming and going to establish the thousand-year reign. The kingdom of heaven, which we addressed in yesterday's video, I believe. Okay, he's going to come back and establish the kingdom of heaven. So, what gospel are they going to be preaching to the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble? The kingdom of God, uh, by grace through faith? No! Hey, guess what? Jesus Christ, in seven years, is going to be coming back. You don't know the day or the hour. You'll be able to know the year. You will. Not the day or the hour. Find me where it says year. It doesn't. Okay? You'll be able to know the year. Not the day or the hour. Not the day or the hour. But the gospel of the kingdom, the coming kingdom of heaven, when he comes back with us to establish it. Okay? See, dude, guys, you, this is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. It takes over two hours to explain something to you that you, Christian, ought to know, but you don't. You are blind also. You say that you see, therefore your sin remaineth, because the oldest mess manuscripts. Yeah. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. <laughs> you know. Okay? Okay? That's a reference on to the kingdom of heaven, which will be the gospel of the kingdom, the coming kingdom of heaven at his second coming, people. Matthew 24 is not doctrinally for us today. It's describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? After the tribulation. No! Okay? <laughs> come on. Come on, people. Come on. And John 19. But see, here, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. John 19. See, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Okay? He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So when you say John 3.16 is the gospel, uh, no, it isn't. No. He was speaking to a Jew under the law. Offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? What? It's not the gospel for us today. Because why? What's different? When John, when he said, John 3.16, he made reference onto it. Yes, he did. He made reference onto the cross, but he didn't specifically name it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And besides, he didn't die very and raise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood yet. <laughs> Obvious! What happened? John 19. 28 on the 30. After this, Jesus knowing all, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. 
When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It's finished. He died. He was buried. He rose again and he shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. Hence, temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, exposing the holy place, which only the high priest was allowed to go in to on Yom Kippur. The dispensation changed the death of the testator. It's finished. So you see, telling someone that John 3.16 is the gospel is actually heresy because you're taking something that was relevant for another dispensation and trying to make it relative for today. There's a place for John 3.16, but it is not the gospel, dear friend. Our faith is in what? It's finished. The finished work of the cross. When he said John 3.16, he hadn't died yet. And Nicodemus had no clue about the cross. No one did until it was revealed. Okay? Okay? Mark chapter 1. Well, we're almost done. You know, if I, I sent this, the notes for this to several brethren in case the Lord took me home, that one of them would have done the video for this. And one of them would have. But, um, get me alive okay mark chapter 1 verses 14 on to verse 18 now after that john was put in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the kingdom of god and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel hmm. is it the same thing i don't think so i don't think so now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Shimon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus sent unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. So, the kingdom of God. Now, is that a reference on to the physical, literal kingdom of heaven? Okay, you can, okay, I guess you can, okay, had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. Okay? While he was on the earth the first time, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. But, see, Jewry had to have faith that Jesus was the king. You could make the argument that, okay, that is a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom. You could make that argument. But, again, again, kingdom of heaven is distinct okay that okay they had to believe that he was who he said he was and the people who were supposed to know that didn't they didn't want it they had no king but caesar they wanted they wanted to be their own god you want sin i'll give it to you hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 on verse 3 let us therefore, now remember, the book of Hebrews is also for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, like the book of James is. Okay? Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left, uh, left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So, again, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the gospel that is going to be preached is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Okay? All right. So when the gospel preached as well as unto them, okay, 
Was the gospel of the kingdom of heaven preached unto the Gentiles? No. No. God, the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the spiritual was. After the death, burial, and resurrection, specifically, okay, for us Gentiles, okay? But again, this is written for the Hebraic Jew, Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. So the kingdom, what gospel be uh, preached as well as unto them? The gospel of God, the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom of God, okay, which is spiritual, okay? Revelation 14, verses 6 on to verse 8. Revelation 14, verses 6 on to verse 8. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. What was that? Uh, oh, verse 8. Okay, now. Heretics, the everlasting gospel, by grace through faith. No. Once the Lord comes back at his second coming to establish the kingdom of heaven, he ain't going anywhere. He's here. So the everlasting gospel, which goes, which is the kingdom of heaven, that goes into eternity. Okay? The everlasting gospel is not by grace through faith. Um, by grace through faith ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. You, you, you fake gracers can't prove that wrong. You twist the scriptures really good to try to do it because you, you purposely don't rightly divide it. And if you do, you do stupid stuff like, oh, Romans uh, 10, 19, and 11 are written. No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay? The everlasting gospel. The kingdom of heaven. Once Jesus comes back, he ain't going nowhere. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. Because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's not Israel. That great city. That's Babylon. Rome. Not Jerusalem. Okay? Alright? Now, Matthew chapter 6. One, and we're, we're, you know, we're, we're getting to the, the end of this. Okay? I told you this was meat, not milk. Matthew chapter 6, verses 27 on to verse 30. Kingdom of heaven, thousand year reign. The Sermon on the Mount, that's when it will be doctrine. The Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay, I'll throw that one in here as well. Okay. All right, Sermon on the Mount. All right. 27 out of 30. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass... Of the field which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Is that about? Is that a reference onto the death, burial, and resurrection? Number one, when he said that, he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. But, okay, when you read the Sermon on the Mount, it's all works. Forgive to be forgiven, right? Okay, so little faith in who? Their king. That you know the miracle of the loaves is like how is it that you how is it that you have no faith that he is king and that king he would provide for his people. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter eight twenty three on the seven, on the twenty seven, Matthew chapter eight verses twenty three on the verse twenty seven. And when he was entered into a ship, 
his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Was that in the death, burial, and resurrection? No. The king was asleep on a pillow. The king, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. God the Father was right there, the Mashiach. They're like, we're going to die, we're going to die. And he's like, what, what? And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Look at this verse. Say they were looking forward to the cross, huh? But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Oh, he's God the Father. But they were looking forward to the cross. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Uh, Matthew 16, verses 6 on to 12. Matthew 16, verses 6 on to 12. Matthew 16, verses 6 on to 12. Then, say, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, which should have known that he was the Messiah. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, faith in the death burial, by a grace of faith, no. <laughs> Why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves, the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? What does that mean? It's like, Doug, as king, he will provide for his people miraculously if he needs to. Okay? And remember, the kingdom of heaven is going to be all works and farming. Okay? If you don't go and worship him at the Feast of Tabernacles, you won't get rain, you won't get food, you won't get bread. Okay? He will be the provider as king. Okay? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not unto you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Okay? Little faith. Little faith in what? The death, burial, and resurrection? No. That he is king. Because the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. It couldn't be by grace through faith, you idiot. Okay? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Luke chapter 12. Okay? Luke chapter 12. Now, that aspect what I was telling you about. Luke chapter 12. Okay? He came here under the law to fulfill the law to be the death, you know, death, burial, and resurrection, and the perfect sinless blood of the Lamb without blemish shed on the cross. Okay, he was offering the physical kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people, but the Hebraic Jewish people needed to believe what? That he was their king. And the blind guy did. But those, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the educated ones, you know, the ones who should have known, they didn't get it. Luke 19, 12, uh, 27 on to verse 30. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And if God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Again, the king will take care of his own. Okay? They had to have faith that he was their king. And Jewry rejected it. Individually is a different thing. Okay? Because under the law, he was still dealing with the nation. 
the death, burial, and resurrection, blood shed on the cross. Us Gentiles are grafted in now individually. And the time of Jacob's trouble, nationally, to the Jews. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Let's read verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, spiritual, and even in the Sermon on the Mount that distinction is made there, meaning a difference between the physical and the spiritual. Okay? And the spiritual is what we are preaching today. Okay? And all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? Go to Matthew chapter 6, and then we will be done. 31 on to verse 34. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 on to verse 34. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. And he was not sent unto the Gentiles while he was here at first. No, he wasn't. Okay? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Spiritual that you believe, that the Jews were to believe that the King, the Son of David, God the Father, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, is right there. Okay? That's what their faith was in. Not in the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Therefore, take, take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, he sh shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? See, and there are some that will today come to this and say, Well, hey, you don't need to work or do anything for the Lord. No, he said that in the context of the kingdom of heaven. People, dear, dear Christians, John three sixteen is not the gospel. There's a place for uh, there is a place for John three sixteen in your testimony and witness. Yes, but it's not first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, or whatever. Um, no, John three sixteen is not the gospel today. Okay, it isn't. It isn't. Okay, is it truth? Absolutely, but context of it. He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he was offering the, the physical literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. And the Hebraic Jewish people as a nation needed to believe that he was who he said he was. And they didn't. That is it for this video. Um, long one, but it needed to be. Thank you for watching this if you do. I uh, hope this helps you to understand. I really do. People, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you need to start rightly dividing the word of truth and stop lying to people. God doesn't love you. God so loved it that he gave. That's the answer. And John 3.16 was said before he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. So, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching this if you do. Keep us in your prayers, brethren. We covet your prayers. We need all the prayers and help we can get. We really do. Thank you. I love you. See you in the next video.